All right, we got the big fella. I see him. Big Casey Hampton, greatest defensive tackle ever to roll through the 40 acres, should be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Big Case, how you doing? Man, what's good with you, baby? I'm good, man. I'm good. Can't complain. I mean, it's always good to see Casey Hampton. I know uh, it's it's a lot nicer to see you than than those uh, offensive players you were manhandling back in the day. You know, just to set the stage for our man Casey Hampton, because we do want to get your take on Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy. Casey Hampton led Texas in tackles for two seasons from the defensive tackle position. That's how much of a baller this dude was. Casey, I still cannot believe that. You led the entire defense in tackles for two seasons at Texas from the defensive tackle position where they're double teaming you, doing everything they can to make your life miserable, and you're still making the play. Man, you know, playing next to uh, Sean Rogers and, and Cedric Wood, Aaron Humphrey, man, made it easy. If you, it's like pick your poison, man. Like, you, any one of us gets singled up, you, you can already chalk it up as a tackle, tackle for loss. So, I mean, it, it, they made life a lot, a lot of, really, really easy for us. And um, Coach, Col Coach Bull Reese used to always tell us, and he was a linebacker's coach and a defensive coordinator. And his famous saying was, the linebacker's on scholarship too, go get the ball. So, you know. That you can't get no you can't get no better than that when you when your uh, coordinator telling D line to get the ball like that. Oh man, I mean, I, and I know you were the one who was always like, "Hey, Sean, you you and Cedric Woodard were always trying to get Sean amped up, like saying, hey, man, did you hear what that guy said about you?'" <laughs> Say it's like he said what? But yeah, that, I mean that those were so much. It was so much fun to watch you guys uh, get it done, and then you go to Pittsburgh, you win two. Super Bowls, two uh, world championships in, in Pittsburgh. And we were talking to John uh, McClain, who's a Hall of Fame voter. And I said, how is Casey Hampton not getting onto the finalist ballot for the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Guy won two Super Bowls. He was the best player at his position for the decade that he played. I mean, Casey, it's got to be frustrating to, to have the career you had in and maybe not get the love that that you should have gotten, that you should be getting. Uh, I, I ain't gonna say it's um, disappointing. You know, I ain't gonna never disrespect the game. I respect all those guys who uh, put in work and, 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 and were able to make it. You know, um, if I make it cool, if I don't, man, I've had, I had a great career. And um, like I said, man, I, I can't take nothing away from those guys that are in it by saying I'm supposed to be in it. I just, if it's supposed to happen, it's gonna happen, man. I, I know I put in a lot of work, and um, hopefully to be recognized, man. You know, I don't have the stats a lot of the other guys have and things like that, but the importance to my team and, and what I did for my position, I think it spoke, it spoke for itself. Yeah, yeah. Casey, going to this Texas football team, Steve Sarkeesian, getting to the college football playoff. That defense led by some solid interior tackles and Trevon Dre Sweat and Byron Murphy. When you look at those two guys, what do you see? How they impact the game? You know, who do they remind you of? And what do you think about their futures in the NFL? I mean, you know, you know, everybody want to make the natural comparison to me. Uh, me and Big Baby, you know, um, and I can kind of see it a little bit. I, I think um, Sweat is a lot bigger than Big Baby was in college. He's a lot <laughs> bigger. Like Big Baby, Big Baby 320 was big for him in college. So, but um, those guys, man, the sky's the limit, man. Byron Murphy, dude, I think he's going to be an unbelievable pro. You know, and the guy is explosive, uses his hands. Um, I could say he reminds me of me, man, but the dude is, he's a way better pass rusher than I was. I think he's going to be elite, elite at the next level with uh, with his skill set. And, and Sweat, I think the same thing, man. Like, big guy, big kid. I don't know about 366. Um, I really haven't talked to him about the weight or anything like that. Man, you can't really tell a guy what the weight or things like that, but I just know being lighter will help you out at that next level, being able to play more downs and things like that. But his skill set and being able to play and play hard at that weight is is unbelievable, man. And being that fast at that weight, I think those guys, man, they they're gonna change the game and, and get Texas back 
to get those big time guys at, at the defensive line position, man, because what they showed, I mean, they got it. Both of them have it, man. I, I, I like what I saw that, uh, these past couple seasons with those guys. Now, Casey, you probably watch the game differently. I always talk to our friend Dan Neal about this. Dan's like, I'm not even watching the game. I'm just watching the interior line to see who's winning those battles. Um, Alfred Collins and Vernon Broughton, those are the guys who are going to step in for, for Sweat and Murphy. What are you seeing from, from those two and, and what uh, – you know, what you like and maybe what they need to do to take the next step? Uh, I just think it's going to be just playing more and getting comfortable in that role of, of being the man. I think those guys, when, when they got in, it really was no drop-off, man. Those guys played. I mean, they, have, they had a great coach. You know what I mean? I, I think they they were well-coached, using their hands and things like that. And um, I think that um, those guys are, are going to be really, really good players. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a, a drop-off at all. I think they can really get it done. Now, Casey, rewind back to Dravondre Sweat. As you mentioned, him being 366, that's kind of what scares these coaches and GMs if he can maintain his way so he can be the elite player that we think he can be. You never had a problem with that. For you to be over a decade plus in the National Football League as, an, as a tackle, like that's so impressive. You obviously took care of your body. What would you recommend Dravondre Sweat doing obviously he has to lose weight but how does he go about it how does he keep it off and to where he could get that next contract well i think that uh and that's that i didn't have a problem with it in college but in the nfl it definitely was an issue trying to keep my weight down and things like that so i know that struggle and i i, I just think that the main thing is you don't want to go in with that being a problem like i think that that guys don't understand that like when you go in you want to go in and say, you want guys to just worry about you playing football. You don't want it to be an issue of, man, I got to worry about this guy being this way and being that way. You know what I'm saying? First and foremost. And, and what I found when I played, I played my best years when I was lighter, when I was lighter. You know what I'm saying? Just looking back at the thing, you know, when you're playing, you're in it, you don't think about it. But just looking back at it, man, just I, I played my best seasons when I was lighter and I, and I felt a lot better. So. I don't, and, and like I say, man, I don't really, I don't know how he feels at that weight. And he's a big guy. He's tall, too. And I'm not that tall. So I, I, it's just hard for me. Like, because Big Baby could, when he was in the NFL, he could play at 350, get up to 360 and things like that and still move and look good. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, he, he could do it. But I think early on it'd be fine. But I think as he get, gets older, he definitely going to have to trim some of that weight down and um, to, to play a lot, a lot better. So when you say when you were lighter, what was lighter for you? Lighter when? What, 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 like what, when you what, were playing at your best in the NFL? Uh, probably like, probably, probably like 325, 330 when I was lighter. I know in, in Texas, I was probably 310, you know what I mean? But toward the end of my career, I was playing at 355, 360. That's, that's just too big for me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Me being, I'm only 6'2", so you know what I mean? And then you get older injuries and stuff like that. So that's a little bit, that was a little bit too heavy for me. You know what I mean? But, you know, that's what it was. All right. Now, I know you're heading off to the Houston Rodeo here, but the Pittsburgh Steelers, I'm sure you, you know, have, first of all, take us back to when you're winning Super Bowls in Pittsburgh. You're the one technique in a 3-4 defense you're the point of attack and tell us what playing on that defense was like the dudes who were around you and how much fun you were having. That's really what it was about, man. It was really about the dudes around me, man. That, that's what made it fun. You know, playing with D linemen. I had three D linemen that I played 11 years, 11 years with at least 11, 10, 11 years. You know, I had my linebacker, a couple of linebackers I played with 10 plus years. You know what I mean? DBs, like, that's what it's really all about, man. I, I don't think you really see that in a whole lot of other places where guys at every level I played with for 10 plus years, like, that's, and, and, and on great, not only good defenses, great defenses. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the, the atmosphere in Pittsburgh, the family atmosphere, it just made things so different, man. Like, it was ran like a, a mom and pop shop, like a, a, a family business. Like, Mr. Rooney was there every day. You can go in his office, what's up, and holler at him. Like, he was just, 
up there on the same floor that the, 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 the team meetings and all, everything was on. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was, it, it was, it was, it was different, man. And, and going about it with those guys, man, that, that, um, you knew their families and loves and things like that. That's what, that's what, it, that's what made that Pittsburgh experience so fun and so different from, I think, a lot of guys experience in the NFL. Yeah. What do you think about Russell Wilson going to Pittsburgh? Hey, man. I, I like it. I like it a lot, man. I, I think um, you gave Ken an opportunity, man. I think the team is ready, man. I, I think the team is ready. I think we got all the skilled guys on offense. I just think we need a guy to get in the ball and, and get the ball consistent and don't turn the ball over because the defense is good. You know, we're going we gonna to be all right, man. I mean, we, we got a quarterback. We're going to always be in the game and, and be able to compete. So I, I think that's a really good move. Really good move for him. It's going um, to change some things around that for us. You think the Steelers, I mean, it's amazing how long the the coach, well, they've only had like three coaches. It's crazy, Casey. What is it about Pittsburgh where people go and they stay? It's the organization, right? It's the, it's the, it's the organization. Like I said, it's, it's, ran, it's a family type of business. Like you don't get that a lot of places, man. And, and it's really genuine. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like they're not the most extravagant and you ain't gonna have the, the best of things or whatever, whatever, man. But everything is real, everything is love and you and you feel that in Pittsburgh. You know what I mean? And I, I think that's what um and I and I that's the only place I played, the only place I've been, but I can only go off what other guys said. That any guy who's came in that locker room has said that that locker room was different than any other locker room and that organization was different than any other organization they've been in. What's your relationship with Mike Tomlin? Obviously, he's been there a long time and never having any losing seasons is pretty remarkable in itself. But what makes him unique and different than other coaches that you have, which haven't been many, but still? I mean, me and Mike seem cool, man. Um, I think what makes him different, man, he relates He relates to the guys, right? Um, you know, people say players, coaches, and things like that, but I, I think that um, he really exemplifies that. Like, um, he takes heed to what the guys think, what the guys say. He's up to date with everything. He keeps it real with you. He, he ain't going to sugarcoat it. He's going to let you know what it is. And I think as a man, you respect that. You know what I mean? Like, he, he not gonna, he's not going to tell you nothing to make you feel better. He's going to tell you what you need to hear. You know what I mean? And, and keep it real with you. And, and that's all you can That's all you can ask for a coach, man. And, um, and you know he's down with you. He wants the best for you. And he's always going to be prepared. You know what I mean? When you when you watch that guy prepare and watch how he uh, gets the team prepared and things like that, I think guys really respect that and they know that they're going to go into the game ready to go. Casey, do you have a favorite game that you played at Texas? Oh, man. Not really, man. That was a long time ago, man. I, that stuff just kind of <laughs> run together to me, man, right about now, man. That was a long time ago. It's, it's hard for me to remember all of We just had a, good, a lot of good times, a lot of, you know, a whole lot of good times, man, playing with my guys. I just remember, I remember Sims telling me, y'all were playing at Kansas. He threw a pick six to, and y'all were down 10 nothing. And he said, Casey came over to me and said, hey, we're not having this today. We're not having this today. And, uh, and Sims, you know, he got it together. Y'all won big, like 51 or something. And, and uh, I think he said he walked up to you after the game and was like, hey, we good? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you like that? You like that? Talking to us, yeah, that, that was cool, man. You know, Sims a cool cat, man. Them, them dudes, man. I just try to get them guys going, man. Get them rolling. Get them, yeah. just, just get them fired up, man. You know, that's that's just what it was back then. I try to get them going. Yeah, I mean, that you you had you were the best player leader because you were doing it. You were doing everything on the field, so you could look at guys in the eye and say, "Hey, I need more." Yeah, I'm lead on the field. I'm going to run hard. I'm going to work out. I ain't missing no workouts, none of that. You know, that's that's a part of it, man. You know, you can't just be no leader at that level, especially. You got to lead by example as well. You can't just be a great player, man. I, and I, I believe in that. And I think that, you know, me, Cedric, you know, Aaron Humphrey, we had some really, really good leaders, man. Like some, some guys who went out there and, and led by example every day and got out there and got it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was amazing. Like, Makovic – did an amazing job of recruiting. Like if you took all of Makovic's best players against any other generation of Texas football, it's, 
I mean, he recruited you and Humphrey, Ricky Williams. I mean, Tony Brackens, the list goes on. What, uh, you know, what, I mean, you had some talented dudes around you. Oh, yeah. It, it was definitely some talented guys. You know, it was, but it was him. He recruited some great guys and, and Matt, and Matt Brown did too. So, you know, I mean, it was, it was, it was a revolving door. We had, we had really, really good players. Um, the whole time I was there, definitely blessed with that, man, because having guys around you that can play makes it a whole lot easier for you, man. It makes it a whole lot easier for you. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the Horns going to the SEC? Obviously, you playing in the Big 12, it's a big difference not playing in Oklahoma State, Baylor, and Texas Tech anymore. What are your thoughts on SEC now? I'm fired up about it, man. I think they're preparing for it. Um, I think it's going to be a, um, a big change, but I think with the bigger linemen, the bigger, the bigger body type guys, they're getting like, like just the big squatty body guys. They're getting the big, tall, long, lean guys and things like that, like the Alabamas and the Georgias have. I think we're going to be able to compete. You know what I mean? I, I think um, I think it's going to be good for us, man. You know, college, college football, man, as long as you have a quarterback, you, you're you going to be in the game. And I think that um, our coach ain't going ain't gonna to have a problem getting a quarterback while he's there. So I think we're going to always be all right. Yeah. All right, Case, we know you got to go, but – Let's keep this conversation going as the season gets closer, man. We need your perspective on uh, on what we're seeing. Already, man. Just let me know. All right. Appreciate Casey you, Casey. Hampton. All right, man. Y'all be easy, baby. Appreciate you.